Thank you for coming back to the conversation. It really is a celebration of nurses, the work they do, the hard work they do, and what we want you to understand about what it means to be a nurse. We have uh, nurses from different fields and professions. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to get to was the the weight you carry emotionally uh, and physically and the demands, particularly after COVID. I think, uh, Elise, you described it as a PTSD yeah. from COVID. Is that something you all agree you experienced? Well, yes. Jen, you came in during COVID, yeah. but let's talk about that. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of times we, you know, what we what we went through mm -hmm. during COVID and the toll that it took on us as the caregivers, right? We saw things astronomically that we had never seen before. Right. I have been in the profession well over 20 years and I did, I've never seen death happen mm. in such a force that like it was uncontrollable, right? right? The volume. When they say a pandemic, it was an epidemic. It was everything that you could not imagine if mm. you're right there experiencing it. Um, and just the thinking of the families that it affected and it affected you as well. Just having to go home to that yeah. and to deal with the mental capacity of still being able to serve, still being able to be there and be present. That's the biggest thing, being present yeah. and being able to deal with your own emotional state that you have to take home with you. Right. So I, I think that we don't touch on that as much as what it actually did to us. Right. And Jim, you actually became a nurse during COVID? Yes. Why? <laughs> um, <laughs> it was just something I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, prior there was a lot of talk about that. I don't yeah. mean that, you know, yeah. callously. Yeah. That was a difficult time to go in. It was, but um, I made amends to myself and my family. Um, I was a CNA for five years mm -hmm. um, before, prior to COVID. And my grandmother, um, I remember when I was a CNA, she passed away and she told me, keep doing what you love. Um, stay with nursing. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. And I remember after she died, I worked in a nursing home. So I would see all the geriatric patients and yeah. I would just like think like, I wish I could do this with my grandma. I wish I could oh. do this. Um, so I, I devoted myself for my patients that no matter what it is, no matter what disease happened, I'm always going to be there. I'm going to be that listening ear. I'm yeah. going to be that nurse for them. Um, but why COVID? Um, during New York, my family that was going through it with um, COVID at the time as well. Yeah. Um, I just said that, you know, this is what I chose. And this is um, what you were committed I to doing. I prayed for it. I was committed to it in the door or out. <laughs> Ebony, for yeah. you, this was six months away from family. Yes. And some really very difficult experiences. I remember, so my father's an immigrant. Um, and I remember my father telling me, I wish I had a million dollars. And I said, why? He was like, because I would tell you not to go to work. This is mm. a father that's always like, my daughter is a nurse practitioner, you know, <laughs> things like that. So for him to say that triggered me because he also wasn't vaccinated. Mm. So I had to leave out of my own house and stay in a hotel for six months wow. because of the fact that I was so scared to get my father sick. Yeah. Knowing and that I, that'll be on me. And I know you had to do some very difficult things mm -hmm. at, at work in terms yes. of how you had to care for uh, those who had passed from COVID. Yes. So the, the morgue par in particular, it yeah. was full. So there were times where we had like babies, which we normally never mm. have babies and yeah. adults together mm. because they were full. It was times where we had nowhere to put them. So we had to hurry up and not me per se, but had to hurry up and get right. them. Right. The team. So, yeah. yeah so. so I'm curious. Um, and thank you all of you. Okay. Cause I think this is a reminder uh, of the yeah. challenges that you all deal with. How do you cope? How do you care for your own mental health when you are caring for the health of others? Um, for me, definitely meditation. Okay. Taking time out Carving time for myself is absolutely, absolutely essential. So whether that means going to the gym. Um, so for me, during after COVID, I, unlike you, I went home and I was like, I'm done. I quit. <laughs> Anything that really? was related to nursing, yeah. I got rid of it. <laughs> and I had no clue what I was going to do. But I quit. Um, and how long I, did you, how long were you out? Six months. I what? stayed home. So I've got to ask. I'm sorry to interrupt. You stayed home and did what? I meditated. And then went back because you missed it. 
<laughs> because that's what nurses do. <laughs> that's how, that's how you do. Lie. It was a fake quick. It was I, a I, I, it was I, a break, I, <laughs> and that is, that makes sense. And Theo, just quickly for you, how do you uh, deal with the the tough days? Uh, you know, the thing about tough days is that they they never last. Most of the time, mm. most of the time when you have a bad time, it's just fifteen minutes out of your day. Bad mm. bad days are not really bad days. They're just short time spurts of something happening. Like oh. Oh, say that just one more time as we go to break. Bad so, days are not really bad days. They're what? They're just short spurts of things that happen to you that ruin your mood. Bad days are never really a bad day. I like that. It's just yeah. one yeah. That's yeah. like that. So we're going to go to break on that because I like that perspective. See why we were celebrating nurses? <laughs> this is what they do. We love them. All right. I want you to stay with us. The conversation is going to continue right after the break. Of that Hey there, Portia here. Listen, that was a good conversation, wasn't it? Want to see the rest of it? Just go to PortiaShow.com, scroll down until you see that particular episode. But listen, before you scroll on out of here, I need you to do me a favor, please. Like, comment, let us know what you thought of that episode, and subscribe. And if you already are a subscriber, we sure appreciate you. In the meantime, we'll be sure to see you on the next episode of Portia. And you can catch us weeknights on Fox Soul as well. Tell your friends. Tell them to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.